twice you talked a piece on my working as an assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering College. In this session, I am going to cover the topic Environmental Legislation, Water Act, and Forest Act. In this session, I am going to discuss about Water Act, uh, I know, Water Act, and also Forest Act. So, what are the legislations, environmental legislations? Environmental legislations are nothing but environmental laws or uh, these are the laws that protect the environment. So, these environmental law, it is the collection of laws, regulations and also agreements and it, it is a environmental law, it is a common law that governs how human interact with the environment. So, the environmental law, it is a common law. So, it governs how the human beings interact with the environment. So, these environmental laws are legislations, these are the laws so which protect the environment and, uh, and also the environmental law, it is a collection of laws and also regulations also agreements. So, this uh, environmental law, it is includes environmental regulations, laws governing management of natural resources such as forest, plants, mineral sources and also other sources. So, here this environmental law, it is seen as the bodies of laws concerned with the protection of living things from harm that, uh, from the harm that human activity may immediately or eventually cause to them or their species. So, either directly or to the media and the habits on which they depend. So, this is the what uh, environmental legislation, environmental legislations or laws are the, uh, which are the laws that protect the environment. So, here water or prevention and control of pollution act 1974. So, environmental, what is environmental uh, pollution? So, here this is, it is defined as such contamination of uh, in environmental pollution, what is water pollution? It is defined as such uh, contamination of water or uh, such as alteration of physical, chemical, biological properties of water or uh, such uh, discharge as uh, is likely to cause nuisance uh, or uh, render uh, the harmful or injurious to public health and safety uh, harmful for any other use or uh, aquatic plants and other organisms or animal life. So, here environmental pollution means contamination of water or such as alteration of physical, chemical, biological properties in the uh, environment like water, air and also uh, and also these are harmful to the aquatic plants to, and other organisms which are present in water. So, this uh, contamination of water because of the pollutants. So, this is called as pollution, water pollution provision of the act. So, Water Act Prevention and Control Pollution Act 1974. So, here provision of the act is it provides that for maintenance and restoration of quality of all types of surface and ground water. So, the provision of uh, this uh, act it can, it can provides, main, it provides for maintenance and also restoration of quality of all types of surface and also ground water. It provides it provides for the establishment of central and state boards for pollution control. So, it provides establishment for a central and state board for pollution control. It confers, uh, it confers them with powers and functions to control pollution. The act has provisions for funds, budgets, accounts and audit of central uh, and state pollution. This act has provisions for funds also. This is a, uh, have a provisions for funds, budgets, accounts, and audit of the central and state pollution control boards. So the act has provisions for various penalties for defaulters and procedure for the same. The main regulatory body bodies are the pollution control boards and which have been conferred the following duties and powers. So, the central board, uh, the central pollution control board CPCB, so it advises the central government in matters related to prevention and control of water pollution. 
So the Central Pollution Control Board, it provides, it advises the central government in matters related to the prevention and control of water pollution. So it coordinates, coordinates the activities of state pollution control boards and also provides them technical assistance and also guidance. So the CPCB, it, it coordinates the activities of state board, state pollution control boards and also provides them the technical assistance and also guidance. And the CPCB, organize, CPCB organizes the training program for prevention and control of uh, pollution and it is also organizes comprehensive program on pollution related issues through mass media and also the CPCB collects and compiles the and publishes technical and statistical data related to pollution. So, uh, and uh, uh, the CPCB also prepares manuals for treatment and disposal of seaways and trade affairs. So, uh, the Central Pollution Control Board, so this lays down standards for water quality parameters and this uh, plans nation, this uh, CPCB plans nationwide programs for prevention, control or abatement of pollution and this, it is also establishes, recognizes, laboratories for analysis of water seepage or trade effluent sample. So, Central Pollution Control Board, it advises the uh, central government in matters related to prevention and control of water pollution and it coordinates the activities of state pollution control boards and also provides uh, them with technical assistance and also guidance. So, the Central uh, Pollution Control Board, it will organize the training program for prevention and control of pollution and it is also organizes the comprehensive program on pollution related issues through mass media and also it collects and compiles and also publishes technical and statistical data so which is related to the pollution and it is also prepares the manuals which are used for the treatment of uh, treatment and also disposal of seaways and trade effluents. So these uh, CPCB lays down standards for uh, water quality parameters. So these plans for nationwide programs for prevention, control, abatement of pollution. And also finally it establishes and recognizes laboratories for analysis of water surveys or trade effluent sample. So the state pollution control board, the state pollution control boards so these also have similar functions to the executed uh, at the state level and uh, are governed by the direction of CPCB. So state pollution control boards, these also have a similar functions as, a, as that uh, CPCB, Central Pollution Control Board. So the CPCB, the SPCB, the State Pollution Control Board, so the board advises the state government with respect to the location of any industry so that might pollute a stream or a well. So it board advises the state government with respect to the location of any industry. So that might pollute a stream or a well. So it lays down standards for effluents and also it is empowered to take samples from any stream. So well or trade effluent or seaways passing through an industry. The state board, it is empowered to take uh, legal samples of trade effluent in accordance with the procedure of lay down in the act. So the sample taken in the presence of presence of the occupier or his agent, it is divided into two parts, sealed or sealed signed by both parties and sent for analysis to some recognized lab. So if the samples do not conform, to prescribed water quality standards, so then consent is refused to the unit. So here every industry it has to obtain consent from the board by applying on the prescribed pharma, providing all technical details along with the prescribed fee, following with the uh, with which of the effluent it is carried out. So that then the board suggests efficient methods for utilization treatment and disposal of trade effluents. 
So these are the functions of state pollution control board. So here forest act, forest act is, so here it is used for the conservation of forest. So the mainly the forest act 1980, it is deals with the conservation of forest. So the state government, it has been empowered under this act uh, to use the forest only for forestry purposes. So if at all, so it wants to use it on it in other way. So it has to take prior approval of central government. So after which it can pass orders for declaring some part of uh, reserve forest for non-forest purposes. So example mining are for clearing some naturally growing trees and replacing them by economically important trees. So it makes provision for conservation of all types of forest and also for this uh, purpose there is a, an advisory committee which recommends funding for it uh, to central government. So if any illegal non-forest activity within a forest area it is can be immediately stopped under this act. So if any illegal act in any illegal non-forest activity within a forest area it can be immediately stopped under the forest act 1980. So here the non-forest activities include clearing of forest land for cultivation of any type crops. So here non-forest activities these including clearing forest land for cultivation of any type of crops and construction in uh, construction work in the forest for wildlife or forest management it is exempted from non-forest activity so non-forest activity it includes clearing forest land for cultivation of any type of crops but uh, the construction of work the construction work in the forest uh, for wildlife, for wildlife or forest management. So it is exempted from non-forest activity. So example, fencing, making water holes, pipelines, check post. So these uh, uh, are uh, coming under non-forest activity. So but these are exempted from non-forest activity. So Forest Act 1990, so in 1992 amendment in the Forest Act it's taken place. So here the, the 1992 amendment in the forest act it is has the provisions for allowing some non-forest activities in forest. So in uh, uh, in this provisions it will provisions uh, uh, for allowing some non-forest activities in forest. So without cutting trees or limited cutting with prior approval for central government. So these activities uh, of setting transmission lines, uh, seismic surveys, drilling and hydroelectric power uh, projects. The wildlife sanctuaries, national parks are totally prohibited for any exploration or survey under this act without prior approval of central government. So and also cultivation of tea, coffee, spices, rubber and plants. So which are cash crops. So these are included under non-forestry activity. The cultivation of tea, coffee, spices, rubber plants which are cash crops. So these are included under non-forestry activity. So the cultivation of fruit bearing trees, oily yielding plants or plants of medicinal value in the forest area. These need to be first approved by the central government. So the cultivation of fruit bearing trees, oil yielding plants, also plants for medicinal value in a forest area, these need to be first approved by the central government. So in this uh, 1992 amendment has taken place in Forest Act. So here next one is uh, the thus cal cultivation. It is a type of silk yielding insect. <laughs> It is a type of silk killing insect in forest areas by tribals as a means of their livelihood. It is treated as a forestry activity as long as it does not involve some specific host trees like Arjuna and Assam. So the plantation of mulberry for rearing silk worm, it is considered as non-forest activity. Mining is a, a non-forest activity 
and it is a prior approval for central government mand mandatory so mining also in mining in forest also it is a non forest activity so we have to take approval from the central government so the central approval from the central government board it is very mandatory for mining in forest so removal of um, stones badgery etc so these are fall under non forest activities so any proposal sent to government for uh, non forest activity so must have a cost benefit analysis and environmental impact statement so of the proposed activity with reference to its ecological and socio economic impacts thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates